Have you ever wondered what would happen if Ace, Sabo and Luffy decided to become Marines? What rank would they achieve? How strong would they be compared to how powerful they are in the original timeline? And how would they, as Marines, deal with the most powerful pirates in the series? Well, I just spent an unhealthy amount of time figuring this out so that you don't have to. So make sure to keep watching and do subscribe so that we can spend even more time figuring out other crazy ideas in One Piece. In the original timeline, Ace, Sabo and Luffy promised each other that they would each be become great pirates one day, and they surely did carve out their individual paths. Luffy went on to follow in his hero's footsteps and is now among those considered to be the greatest pirates of his generation. Sabo wasn't able to achieve his original dream of becoming a pirate and writing books about his travels, but instead his life took him on a roller coaster ride that led him to becoming the Revolutionary Army's second in command. And Ace, in his own tragic way, satisfyingly completed his pirate story that ended with his sad passing. So that's what we got in the original timeline. And before we look at how Ace, Sabo and Luffy becoming Marines would change the story, let's first create a scenario on how such a thing would be possible in the first place. In Luffy's case, witnessing Shanks' heroism firsthand definitely played a huge impact on the impressionable child. So in order for Luffy's perspective to change, a standout figure must leave the same imprint on Luffy about becoming a Marine in the same way that Shanks did about piracy in the original original timeline, and there is no better candidate to fulfill this role than his own grandfather Garp. And in this way, this video could actually be called What if Garp was a more reasonable grandfather to Luffy? An alternate world where Garp treated his grandson in a manner that would actually inspire him. And so in this alternate universe, replacing Shanks' heroic actions from the original timeline is Garp. But given Fusha Village is a small town with not much to do, Luffy would have probably still crossed paths with the red-haired pirates this time getting into arguments about who's cooler, the marines or pirates, still sneakily taking a bite out of free food, and therefore ending up with the powers of the Gomu Gomu no Mi. But now, instead of Shanks saving Luffy from Higuma, when Higuma shows up at the bar, Luffy proudly boasts about his grandfather Gar, and as a result, Higuma doesn't even attempt to hurt Luffy in the first place out of fear for the legendary Garp. And Luffy, witnessing how much power just his name holds, would have utmost respect for his grandfather's status and reputation. And as Luffy spends more time with Garp to be more like him, which can only mean one thing, and that's Garp throwing Luffy into wilder, dangerous scenarios in the name of tough love. Until one day, Luffy is tasked with defeating the Lord of the Coast, which he can't do because he's unable to swim. And so just in the nick of time, Garp shows up, scaring the Sea King away with just one look, cementing Luffy's decision to follow in Garp's footsteps. But this isn't the only only thing Garp manages to influence, because Garp also influences Luffy to install Ultra VPN, which isn't hard to do because Ultra VPN has all the benefits of a premium VPN for just a fraction of the cost. We live in scary times, evil pirates, even eviler world government, but most of all, evil pesky scammers who are using our data for phishing attacks, identity theft, and the list goes on. But if we don't have gomu gomu powers like Luffy, how are we to protect protect ourselves. Well, thanks to the sponsor of today's video, UltraVPN, you can start improving your safety online while accessing more of what you'd like. UltraVPN is only $1.99 a month, which is insane when you compare it to the price of other VPNs. On top of standard VPN services, an UltraVPN plan also includes a password manager, which is helpful if your memory is as bad as Zoro's sense of direction, as well as a dark web scan to check if your account logins and passwords passwords are exposed on the dark web. As a new customer, you can access a premium VPN for a discounted monthly rate of just $1.99 by choosing a two-year plan. And if you don't like it, Ultra VPN offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. For someone like me living in the world down under, Ultra VPN with over 100 servers worldwide helped me access loads of content that I can't get in Australia. Look at all of these anime. I didn't even know Haikyuu had a movie, let alone four. Ultra VPN also doesn't log your online activity, which means that I can't judge you for whatever you're watching, but I sure as hell can judge you for not taking advantage of this great deal. So sign up today using the link below or scan the QR code because your new secure online future awaits. Speaking of new future, Garp still takes Luffy to Dadan to be looked after because he needs to perform his marine duties, and here Luffy meets a young boy Ace. Ace who hates his father for being the most well-known pirate in history, which impacts 
impacted his life for the worst, which is why Ace decides to follow the opposite path his father took and pursues a life as a marine to take down all pirates. Luffy and Ace get along out of their shared respect for Garp, and Ace introduces Luffy to his friend Sabo. Sabo, who's of noble blood, is ashamed of being one and dreams of leaving his noble status. And being friends with Ace and Luffy, Sabo sees exchanging his nobility to becoming a public servant by becoming a marine as a fitting way to achieve this and so aims to become a marine alongside Ace and Luffy. Sabo still runs away from home but now trains and lives with Ace and Luffy, the three focusing on getting stronger and living out orderly lives to become marine soldiers. And as becoming a marine is a seemingly noble endeavor supported and encouraged by the world government, Ace and Sabo wouldn't have the mindset or the need of a pirate to steal money and treasures in order to raise personal funds to use once they're ready to set off to sea. Which means that the trio are less troublesome than in the original timeline, and Sabo stays hidden from his parents because he doesn't get discovered during one of the trio's exploits. Sabo likely keeps his noble status a secret for longer until he's ready to tell his brothers about it. But this also means that as Sabo's family aren't aware that he's still alive to bring him back home, Sabo never finds out the nobles' plans to burn down the Great Terminal, nor do his brothers because they never get involved with Blue Jam and so they're not there when the Great Terminal burns down. But it is likely that they would all try to help citizens escape once they do realize the Great Terminal was ablaze and they would see this as their duties as future marines. A huge difference however is that Sabo would never have met Dragon and he never would have left those impactful words on the revolutionary leader. Nor would he have tried to escape Goa Kingdom to rush his journey, instead continuing his training with his brothers and the occasional brutal session with Garp. Now, to kickstart their journey, is Ace and Sabo leaving first to enlist, meanwhile leaving Luffy to follow until he's of appropriate age. And in the original timeline, Ace, Sabo and Luffy wanted to leave at 17 because in Sabo's case, this is before he turns 18 and therefore becomes an official noble, which is the exact age that Ace and Luffy left to start their journey, perhaps in honor of Sabo who they thought had died, but this doesn't have to be the case if they want to be marines. But because there's no currently confirmed minimum age requirement to join the marines, we'll just go by the age of the youngest person shown to join the marines, which is Kobe who was only 16 years old at the time he enlisted. Meaning Ace and Sabo at 16 years old would have been taken by Garb straight to the marine headquarters to receive formal training. Luffy would then follow three years later once he also turned 16, therefore starting his journey a full year earlier than he did for his pirate career, which already impacts the series greatly in a number of ways. But most notably, what would happen to the lives of his closest friends in the original timeline, which we'll get to later. But in terms of strength, the three brothers would have likely had a better trajectory in getting stronger by undergoing formalized training, because if Garp managed to turn Kobe and Helmeppo from sad to Chad, then there is no doubt that Ace, Sabo, and Luffy would be way more powerful by being personally trained by perhaps the strongest marine in history and the late Pirate King's rival. However, this means that Ace doesn't go and get stranded at Sixis Island to eat the Mero Mero no Mi, making both Ace and Sabo non-Devil Fruit users, joining the likes of Roger, Shanks, Rayleigh, and importantly, their mentor Garp as top tier combatants without Devil Fruits. Because in exchange, they're exposed earlier and trained in Haki by Garp, who is one of the best Haki users the series has ever seen. Under Garp's training, they will all receive a tough body that underwent rigorous training and a high level mastery of Haki from a young age. And by the time that Luffy joins the Marines, Ace would have had a better grasp of his Conqueror's Haki, which he has awakened by this point. And he and Sabo, who are always toe to toe in terms of strength, would be at the least holding the position of Commodore, which is a rank higher than Kobe's current position. And both would be the strongest in their cohorts, being considered for the rear admiral positions. And Luffy would benefit from having both Garp and Ace to show him the ways as to how to master his own Conqueror's Haki once he enters the Marines, and he would catch up to his brothers in no time. However, Luffy joining the Marines leaves great consequences for a lot of characters from the original storyline. Kobe, for example, would have continued to be a pirate on Alveda's ship and would never reach his potential without Garp's training. And while that's just one example of how the lives of some of the most prominent characters in the series would drastically change if Luffy became a marine, perhaps nothing is as drastic as how the rest of the Straw Hat's lives would be different. The only Straw Hat whom 
whom Luffy and his brothers would have a chance of meeting and have some sort of relationship with is Jinbei because he's technically part of the world government being a warlord of the sea. The rest? Well, most of their fates are not looking so good, with some even just being straight up depressing had Luffy decided to become a marine. Because if Luffy heads out to sea a year earlier in pursuit of becoming a marine, then he would have likely been on a different route a year from then, which is when Luffy's journey in the original timeline started, and as a marine, he wouldn't have any reason to take on missions in the sectors where the Straw Hats were first introduced. Shellstown already has a marine captain in command in Morgan, which means Zoro would have been executed by Helmepo, who would then continue to terrorize Shellstown under the protection of his father. A corrupt marine captain Nezumi would continue to take bribes from Arlong, which means Nami would have spent her entire life under Arlong's cruelty in fear of what would happen to a village if she disobeys. And that's if she's even lucky enough to escape from Buggy or any other pirate that she tries to steal from. And the Kokoyashi villagers who would eventually decide to fight against Arlong would all die and Arlong would continue bribing the marines to cover up for him. Nothing would be reported to the marines of the supposedly peaceful Syrup village which means that Usopp would have likely been quietly killed by Kuro who would inherit all of Kaya's wealth after killing her and achieves his dream of having a luxurious retirement, living up to his nickname, Kuro of a Hundred Plants. Baratie no Sanji receives any repercussions on the attack on full body, so I doubt much of that would change. However, Sanji and the Baratie would not be able to stop Don Krieg's attempt to take over the restaurant, and unless Zeph decides to join the fight this time, the outcome of their lives depends entirely on whether Mihawk, who's hunting Krieg and his men, gets to Baratie on time, and without Zoro to duel, Mihawk would have easily finished off Krieg and his remaining crew, thereby saving Baratie. However, without Luffy and Zoro to inspire him, Sanji would have stayed at Baratie, suppressing his dream of ever finding the All Blue out of gratitude to Zeph. Chopper would have continued to live his life in hiding, while Wapo regains his throne and selfishly resumes his tyranny over Drum Island. Robin would have likely kept working with Crocodile until she either gains enough information via their alliance, and then would either be killed by Crocodile had he discovered her betrayal or found her to be no longer of use, or she would be hunted down by the marines due to her connection to Ohara. And without Robin, Crocodile would have no way of ever discovering the truth about Pluton, and would likely hopelessly wander around in search for an alternate path to the ancient weapon. The CP9 on Water 7 would eventually discover Frankie's existence, who would be tortured and threatened alongside his loved ones until Frankie eventually gives up the Pluton blueprints, or because my bias doesn't like the idea of Frankie ever giving in, Frankie would also most likely die. Brooke would have continued living his depressing, shadowless life until he finally loses the will to live and exposes himself to the sun. Gecko Moria would have continued completing his zombie army until he's ready to take revenge against Kaido, and then would likely suffer another overwhelming defeat, or perhaps even death as a result. And since there is no Battle of Marineford to summon him, there is no war for Jinbei to refuse to participate in, meaning that he never ends up imprisoned in Impel Down and would continue to be a warlord until the government decides to disband the system, which may be a long while without Crocodile and Doflamingo being exposed. And this is just what happens to the Straw Hats, not counting the kingdoms and citizens that they save throughout the story, nor the Grand Fleet or other pirates, whom Luffy and his brothers may even be tasked with capturing. Which brings us to how Ace, Sabo, and Luffy would deal with pirates. The brothers would undoubtedly be involved in legendary clashes against some of the biggest pirate names in the series. The worst generation would be without Luffy and Zoro, but the young, up-and-coming pirates would still be on the marines' radar, and so Ace, Sabo, and Luffy would likely come across these pirates and be involved in an ongoing cat-and-mouse chase, creating their own separate individual rivalries. With no Ace to capture and offer to the marines in exchange for the warlord title, and no battle of marineford to take advantage of and steal Whitebeard's devil fruit, Blackbeard would need to find another way to put his plan into motion, having only his original crew with him because he wouldn't have been able to sneak into Impel Down amidst the chaos of the war to increase his crew's manpower. But seeing as how schemey Blackbeard is, he will probably find another way. And given how quickly the brothers would have all become stronger, not only by training with Garp, but by also starting their journeys a year earlier, Ace and Sabo would have been marines for a few years, and Luffy, who is now in his second year, would 
have likely been able to outmatch the supernovas and stop at least some of them from entering the new world if they are sent along with Kizaru, Sentamaru and the pacifistas to Saobodi to deal with the rookies. Kizaru, Sentamaru and the pacifistas would also not only be not occupied with Rayleigh and the Straw Hats and therefore no longer forced to split their forces as it was in the original storyline, but they would also now have Ace, Sabo and Luffy in addition to their forces, so things really don't look good for the supernova. And should any of the rookies survive, Ace, Sabo and Luffy would continue to battle these big names for some time until they eventually move on to bigger and better threats. And similar to how Garp and Sengoku used to battle the likes of Roger, Whitebeard and Rocks, the three brothers marine career would involve legendary rivalries against the likes of the Yonko. Whitebeard, Kaido, Blackbeard, Big Mom and even Shanks. Ace would have one of the more dramatic changes as there is no Battle of Marineford and so Ace would continue keep being Goldie Rogers' son a secret, serving the Marines and hunting down pirates instead, where he'll most likely come across people he interacted with and impacted in the original timeline such as the Whitebeard Pirates, but this time being on the opposing side and still with his ambition to make a name for himself and create an identity outside of being his father's son. Which he would now seek to do by defeating powerful pirates such as taking down the four emperors. This means he would still challenge Whitebeard and would likely be defeated but obviously not offered a chance to join Whitebeard's crew. He would try to bring down Big Mom, attempt to kill Kaido as he did in the original storyline and even go after Shanks. And even if Ace isn't going on these expeditions alone but as part of a marine deployment led by another admiral or vice admiral, you can definitely see the likes of Ace, Sabo and Luffy breaking orders to hastily face the head of the Yonko crew themselves, where they would most likely suffer an overwhelming defeat if it was an individual one-on-one -on -one battle, but this defeat only serving as further motivation for the brothers to keep training until they eventually build up the necessary strength and skills. Similarly, Sabo wouldn't be a part of the Revolutionary Army, and so he would one day face off against his currently closest acquaintances. And since since Luffy and Dragon don't cross paths in Logetown, and Garp would have probably continued not saying anything because he had no reason to, perhaps only first bringing up the fact that Dragon is Luffy's father once he witnesses his grandson and his brothers eventually face off against the Revolutionary Army. With Ace, Sabo and Luffy rising higher and higher in the marine ranks and being exposed to glimpses of the dark secret that engulfs the world government, it's only a matter of time until the three brothers start questioning the very institution they chose to serve, especially as they witness up close the injustice in the actions of figures like the Celestial Dragons. And these three young men were now each qualified to take on the position of the Admirals and would indeed be the most likely candidates. But as for now, with no Marineford War, there's no change to the Marine hierarchy, with Sengoku, Akainu, Kizaru and Aokiji all staying in their positions. And this works just fine for the brothers anyways, because because while they have the strength and skills, like Garb, they can't stand the thought of working directly under the world nobles and so refuse to turn a blind eye to these detestable beings. And so, the brothers would make another promise to each other, this time to collectively challenge the discourse and reshape the marine institution for the better from the inside. And just as the brothers are posing difficulties for the world government, simultaneously, Luffy and Ace also both have something that Imu and the Gorosei fear, and that is their Ds. The D in their names. I mean, yes, Garp has it too, but he's a hero. And so even if Ace managed to keep his lineage a secret, it's only a matter of time until someone finally looks closely into it and uncovers his secret. And Luffy is probably someone that they would fear the most because he not only has a D in his name, but he's also Dragon's son and now a user of the Nika Devil Fruit, which would have eventually awakened by this point, particularly with Luffy having fought multiple Yonko. And I doubt the government would allow the very thing that they fear to exist, so they'd probably want to go and execute Luffy, either to obtain the fruit for themselves or rid it from existence. And this could smell very bad news for them, because this may just be what Garp needed to have a change of heart to decide that he is now ready to fully commit to opposing the world government's authority and save his grandsons in the process. And this timeline would also introduce a major difference
difference than the original because it's also a huge benefit to Garp that he trained three of the most powerful marines to ever exist with whom he also has personal relationships. Garp has always been aware of the injustice within the marine system but now he also has the support of three strong allies who by this point each have a number of the other marines looking up to them and willing to follow their commands. Luffy's contagious nature will come into effect here but this time within the marines making strong allies from the inside who are all willing to follow his footsteps to challenge the injustice. Aokiji is proof in the original timeline that you can't change the system from the inside but there is something special about Ace, Sabo and Luffy and that is that they are all so stubborn to the end and collectively with a shared goal it would take the entirety of the world government to have a chance at stopping three of their strongest soldiers leading their charge. In fact what we would have now is a civil war between the world government and the marines and perhaps within the marines as well. While Garp the marine hero alongside new favorites in Ace, Sabo and Luffy are able to rally majority of the marines on their side who all find it much easier to relate and identify with the likes of Garp, Ace, Sabo and Luffy as opposed to the world government. And so they would find on their side the likes of Aokiji and Smoker. Whereas figures like Akainu with his strict sense of justice for order and loyalty to the world government. And now knowing that they are on the same side in opposition of the world government itself, Garp, Luffy and Co could ally with the revolutionary army or at least the two groups would be both working towards the same objective thereby leaving the world government very isolated. Resulting in a situation where we have Luffy and his brothers alongside their allies fulfilling their promise to take down the current world government and navy system to build a new one but with a better objective focused on helping the public. And maybe, just maybe, these three may just be able to achieve it. And so there you have it. What would happen if Ace, Sabo and Luffy decided to join Marines? Can we trade Ace's life for the lives of the majority of the Straw Hats? What would happen to other characters and what would be the future of the institution of the world government itself? Let me know on what you think would happen if Ace, Sabo and Luffy joined the Marines by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you to all our Patreon and channel members and thank you to everyone for listening to another one of my ramblings. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.